So essentially, it's like, yeah, you really can't be a part of the church leadership organization, anything on stage, if you're going to be a deconstructionist. I mean, I like a good shish kebab as much as the next guy. I don't like to be the shish kebab. He does not save you. He will slaughter you. Hashtag Prince of Peace. So I got a verse to read. Is this where it talks about Jesus, the great barbecuer in the sky? Not in my version. Oh, you should get the Traeger translation. Hey everybody, welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. This is Jeff, it's episode 230. We're talking church, Jesus, is Satan, and taking over the world. Andy, how's it going? Uh, what age is too old for skinny jeans? Zach? Turns out decapitation is not the best cure for dandruff. And farmers are killing me. <laughs> yeah, we'll fix that in post. It's okay. We're professional podcasters. No, the farmers are killing me. Well, at least my sleeping habits. So, okay. Farmers, like, well, we had daylight savings. Oh, okay. Dude. This one, I don't know what it, why is this one different? This one's hard. It's killing me. I too. went to bed at 8 p.m. yesterday, woke up at 2 a.m., watched a couple of EPL games, <laughs> and then went to work at 6 a.m. That's English Premier, Premier League, League for Chad. Just for it's, Chad. Yes, Chad. English as a second language. That's, yeah. So European football. Yeah. Fantastic shot. There is goal. And okay. the equalizer. <laughs> I was it's listening to now a pop- tied. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan Freeman would not be a good. There it is. Oh, <laughs> Morgan Freeman. <laughs> My good friend just tied the game in the 89th minute. <laughs> It brought out the equalizer. That actually that happened. Now you lost I it. lost it. Yeah. That's all right. You're, you're good in spurts. Yeah. I started thinking the equalizer, Denzel Washington. I forget it. <clears throat> Anywho, guys, look. New podcast setup. It's beautiful. L- look at this. It's gorgeous. Yeah. My butt's wet, but it's it's. Uh, but it's that gorgeous. has nothing to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These are so brand new that they're still wet from... The just the final clean from being from, born. From, from, it's from just being born. born. That's right. When, when furniture Sma- is born, this smack in the butt of the cushions. There's a decent degree of afterbirth yeah. on. Like, it's usually varnish or <laughs> treatment. Afterbirth of the furniture. We, we did this IKEA cushions. We did this for you, listener. We wanted and watcher, listener. Actually, this nothing is going to help you <laughs> with this. But YouTube uh, friends and fans who are tuning in. We hope this adds to the experience. Um, it does for us, for sure. We were in this kind of funky setup before where it was it was like sitting at a bar, and but not in a good way. Like we were side by side and couldn't look at each other. Yeah. Thank God none of us have Peyton Manning neck because that's all we could do is move this our is, necks. This is about how we work. So, Jeff, tell me about what that's you good. thought about the thing. Uh, it's a good pod. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so I heard that the quote I said, decapitation is not the best cure for dandruff. I heard that on a podcast today and I thought that is a hell of a quote. Like, hey, something's wrong. You need to find a solution. Just make sure the solution, you know, you want the solution to be good, not just don't have a solution, just a solution. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And I talked about skinny jeans because I'm wearing skinny jeans. Yeah, (laughs) that's good. (laughs) Yes. Well, should we talk a little bit about what we're Drinking sure. first, boys. I do have a little bit of this uh, Brothers Bond straight bourbon whiskey, oh, hand okay. selected batch, whatever that means. That show that to the camera. But uh, a friend of ours, shout out to Matt Sather, brought this and we um, left it with us. So we got that. We had a good conversation before he left up back out of town. It was just the three of us plus our friend Matt, and we were just talking about marriage and relationships and solving all the problems. All and of them. I get texts from these guys late at night. Oh, yeah, I went home. I prayed with my wife. You know, victory. Suck it, Satan. Something like that. And I went home and got in a fight with my wife. So, oh. <laughs> so it didn't work, Matt. Oh my it gosh. didn't work. I'm sorry. You know what does work? Beachwood. Citraholic. That's what works. Thank you, Beachwood. You always make me happy every oh. single time. Always delightful. And I, just on a whim, Hard Happy Dad Seltzer from Death Row Records. Gosh, how is that going to go? 
I don't know, but it almost looks like there's 17 servings in this can. So it looks like it's purple. It's grape. It makes you is look that small. racist. It's grape drink, as Andy would say. Purple drink. Uh, I want some of that okay. purple stuff. Okay. Well, while you guys are pouring and whatnot, I do have a jingle to play because we got some feedback to read. Hey yo. I don't even know what I'm drinking. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. You're drinking death row. <laughs> this could be my last supper. Okay, we got some uh, we got some feedback, some YouTube comments. Are we heading to the comment section? Comment section on YouTube, which is never a good idea, but our YouTube is so young and fresh. Some say there's still afterbirth on it that uh, <laughs> we're getting some good feedback and we're going to just run with it. Uh, okay. YouTube.com slash bros, Bibles, beer. Uh, boop that like button. Or smash it, whatever. Uh, subscribe, whatnot. Ladies, boop it. Guys, bump it. All right. Let's see. We've got one from... Actually, one, I know who this person is. Uh, does not live in state. And I'm not sure he'd want his name read, but he did comment on a public page. So, oh, Well, that's fair game. But this is on the, um, the deconstruction episode. Why are Christians deconstructing? These are all related to that. Quote, Jesus changes everything is false. Our desire is to rise up and become more and more like him as the selfless, wise, perfect, loving person is what drives Christians, similar to what Buddhists do to emulate Buddha, etc. There's an ideal humanity should strive toward it, and Christianity offers this, and unlike other religions, doesn't require us to attain it because we can vicariously through Jesus. And then that same person wrote a second comment. Another irony is that becoming a father myself opened my understanding of fatherhood and unconditional love in a way Christianity often said God laid claim to in how he related to us and Jesus. When reading my entire Bible, I began to recognize the love of God was very conditional and didn't resemble how I loved my own children. Paul's passage about what love is and is not in 1 Corinthians 13 did not fit the person of God as articulated throughout the Bible. You know, and if you guys want to just say a comment or two, or I'll just keep I feel like I on. needed. I felt like I needed a whiteboard to, to track the things that they were going through. Yeah, but he was, he was feeling it. Uh, yeah. But thank you for that. Um, and then this is from DSP's son 21. Uh, if you deconstruct, you aren't a Christian. He had that in quotes. And he says, thank you for not making that argument and trying to understand the other side. Lots of people doubt other side. I am that side. <laughs> other pe uh, Lots of people. That's why we put you on your own couch. That's right. The deconstructor's <laughs> couch. I'm in timeout. Well, one day I'm going to earn a spot over there. I'm over here with Jeff. <laughs> We're Christians over here. Right, Jeff? Okay. Jeff? Christians. That's, that's how we live. Christian bros on this side? Atheists over there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm an atheist? I don't know. All right. Uh, thanks for making that argument. Lots of people doubt silently because their concerns are met with such disgust. This silent deconstruction then leads to leaving the faith in isolation. I remember telling a worship leader, well, I believe in Jesus, but probably not the way you guys do. Then they said, well, you shouldn't be on the worship team then. I mean, it depends on what that means, what I that suppose. Means. But you've got a friend in me. I um, like to picture my Jesus. Lead singer Leonard Skinner. And then finally... <clears throat> so, hold on. So essentially, yeah. it's like, yeah, you really can't be a part of the church leadership organization, anything on stage, if you're going to be a deconstructionist. Yeah, it sounds like, hey, I, I love Jesus, but I'm not... I'm not sure about doctrine X, Y, or Z, where I stand on those. And depending on the church you go to, it's not surprising that there'll be, you know, issues with that. But it is, I, it's, I'm glad he noticed we were not saying if you're deconstruct or if, if you are, or if you do, you're not a Christian because those, those just don't hold water. There's life is way more complicated than that. Faith is way more comp complicated than that. It reminds me of the worst version of that when somebody, leaves the faith or maybe doesn't believe the same way 
And you'll hear some people say, well, they were never saved. Like they just make that oh. declaration. Like they, they weren't one, the of faith, the, they were one of the chosen or yeah, and something it's, like it's that. A way of inf- it feels like a way of enforcing boundaries and protecting the people that are currently in it. Like, no, don't worry about it. You guys are safe. He was never really one of us or she, you know? Maybe, maybe the problem is that the term deconstruction is just too broad. You know, like it's, it's, it's throwing every single person in there who is trying to question or reestablish or d- decide why they believe what they believe or, and, and so you, you are going to have some that land on the, Hey, I, I am done being anything that looks like a Christian and I'll call myself a deconstructionist. And then you'll have others who are like, no, I, I found things in the faith that I believed one way and I believe it differently, but I still am a Christian and still dedicated to the faith. Well, it's like people can, people can, um, they don't have to title themselves. And we, we go and we, I mean, title everything in this world, like, oh, you're a part of this group. But ultimately someone could, like Zach, couldn't say he's anything. He just has conversations with people. And if, if he ever yeah. uses the word deconstruction, then there's a group of people who are like, oh, you. One of those. Yep. You're gone. Put the Broad. guitar down. Put the guitar down. Get off of the stage. Leave the church. Broad is the road that leads to destruction. <laughs> and if the interpretation of deconstruction is too broad, maybe it's time to destroy it. Uh, and then would the quiver of musicians be on Sunday mornings if anybody asked them what they really thought? Ooh. Thin is the quiver. <laughs> <laughs> okay, finally, from BW2020. This, this podcast could go places, but dude in the middle can't be wearing a backwards fitted square frames and a graphic tee. <laughs> You're not a youth group leader in 2006. <laughs> Come on. Uh, it wasn't me. Come it was on. It guy. was me. I dress for success. I was I so know. scared that was going to be about me. <laughs> like, God. You, I like is, to think our, our podcast and YouTube channel is just about to take off. The only thing holding it back. <laughs> that was it, man. You got to get contacts and <laughs> let that fro go. <laughs> get a call. I love the comment section. That's great. Yeah, there's other weird ones too. Are there? And some a couple super critical ones. I like those too. Previous guests. Yeah, we'll we'll pick a handful every month. Did you say creepiest guest? Of previous guests. Oh, pre- okay. I, I spoke quickly though. I got you. Uh where are we at? Where are we at? We got things. Well, we, we got, got questions and we about. got a video. <clears throat> we got a video from Shepcon twenty twenty four. Little background. Large, large conference. Um is it a oh man? I should. What is Shepcon? Is that shepherd? shepherd? Okay, it's all pastors and uh, dogs. Yeah, Australian Big furry Aust- ones, German. <laughs> yeah, very specific kinds of dogs just running around. Shepherd con, keeping all those pastors in the middle and very <laughs> tight. Keep a tight group on those pastors. <laughs> That's how they like Jesus it. Jesus is there in the middle. Don't leave the middle. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be able to get into that inner circle if I happen to be a pastor where I currently stand belief wise. So it's it is it is a certain kind of pastor. And that's just a statement of observation. No judgment here. Okay. On I'm yourself. not looking down on high. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not looking down on I. On on high. <laughs> oh. <laughs> From on high. Uh Jeff, can you uh, you know, maybe turn up my uh fifty one year old Oh, yeah. Should we acknowledge the elephant in the room? That was rude. <laughs> we do have a new person on the ones and zeros. We've added, we have 100% more Jeffs in the room. That's right. <laughs> We've added 100% more Jeffs. Jeff Rogers on the ones and twos tonight. Thank you, sir. Producer extraordinaire. And uh, he's handling it amazingly, at least so far. There's still a chance to blow it. But uh, I'm, I'm glad we're, we're going to try to do things that we've never done on this podcast before. And uh, and so far, nothing's exploded. That's right. So Jeff's actually a, a professional. He's got Roger's Real and Fascinating World uh, that, YouTube. That's, that's, those are that's two probably separate. not it. Well, no. Uh, two separate YouTube channels. Are there two channels? It's just Fascinating. Fascinating, Fascinating world. world. Roger's Real Production is his. 
You may not want to be associated with this podcast. <laughs> we should edit this we'll out. Edit that out. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah, we will not edit that, but we will edit it. Uh, but this this clip is uh, it, it caught my eye because I've I've never thought of shish kebabbing as it relates to um, faith and and Jesus, but and people. Uh, this is a, a clip from ShepCon 2024. Uh, Dr. Stephen J. Lawson from Trinity Bible Church in Dallas. And I believe he's talking about the return of the king, not All the right. movie. All right, let's roll that. Jeff, can you uh, cue us? Oh, perfect. Every sin in the history of the world will be brought out. And every sin will either be punished in hell or punished in Christ upon the cross. But not one sin will escape the full curse of the law. Can you pause that, yeah. Jeff? So when, the way he starts, like I, when I first watched this clip, I'm, I'm like, I know I'm going to, there's going to be a part where it flips and I'm just going to hate it. But I have up to this point in the clip though, even though I wouldn't use verbiage like that, like there's a way of interpreting that. He's like, every sin needs to be dealt with in one way or the other. He's referencing sin. Yeah, yes. not the sinner. Right. Yeah. Yes. The and sin so, will be punished. And so I'm like, all right, I'm waiting for the shoe to drop, but okay. I, I could have a charitable interpretation from my humble perspective. All right. Because I'm a hero. <laughs> Stolen valor. I just, the idea of, <laughs> the idea of punishing the sin, I, I was a little... I was a little thrown sideways. I'm like, wait. Let's see if he unpacks it. Okay. All right. All right. Unpack that. In righteousness, he judges in verse 11 and wages war. Wages war is one word in the original. And it means to fight violently. With the intent to inflict great harm and destruction. It it means to enter into battle and to fight to the end. This is not a happy Jesus who's coming back. This is an angry Jesus. I'm sure you've seen the advertising campaign, He Gets Us. He's one of the Berean babes. Oh, he's going to get us. Pause real quick. (laughs) He's going to get us? Oh, man. And the place erupts like... Jesus gets us. Oh, he's going to get you. It's almost like, oh, Oh. I can't wait. But really, it's they're not thinking of themselves. They're thinking of all the. I wonder dirty, how long he. Sinners. I wonder how long he thought about like getting that one liner in there. Oh, how can I turn that? How can I turn this into something good and funny? <laughs> this is my funny moment. It's my funny moment on stage. I don't. I can't get away from the fact that all I'm thinking about when he's like, he's gonna be an angry. I'm just thinking of like all of the husbands who have terrible mother-in-laws and are just thinking like, oh, I can picture angry Jesus. It's my mother-in-law, and she's Jeanette. Some she's serious Karen. <laughs> some so, serious projection going on there. Yeah, <laughs> should we pause the, <laughs> this for a little he bit? Just Jeanette. take a moment. <laughs> is that her? Is that her name? Did I guess? No. Oh, it's how not awesome mine. would that be, Cheryl? Not, Cheryl, not mine. Oh, not God. mine. No. Can, can all of the all Kansas. others? Danica. <laughs> yeah, the race car driver. Yeah. Is Danica Patrick your mother in law? <laughs> <laughs> you can tell you can I can you tell can you share Okay. Yeah, you can be honest I with us. I do get free go daddy all the time. <laughs> <laughs> By the way. I get free go daddy. Like that's a thing. Like it's a product. <laughs> hey, I ran out of go daddy this week. Can you guys you guys got any extra? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. I'm trying. Hey, if GoDaddy wants to sponsor us, I mean, we're cheaper than Danica. Do they even exist anymore? Yeah, yeah. we're way cheaper than Danica Patrick. Jeez. All right. 
Let's Sorry, keep, mother-in-laws. Let's keep listening. He's dropping some bombs on the He Gets Us, AKA, the controversial uh, angry, commercial. Angry Jesus. Series. All right. He's going to shish kebab us. <laughs> oh, my God. It presents some liberal woke Jesus, some another Jesus. Listen. Either Jesus redeems us and reconciles us and forgives us and saves us, or he judges us and condemns us and damns us and torments us. Ow. There is no other option. If he does not save you, he will slaughter you. Hashtag Prince of Peace. This is the appearing. Hashtag Prince of Peace 2024. Christ. Hashtag God is love. And this world has never seen anything like the Holocaust that is looming on the horizon. (laughs) Now I know why I should fear God. Uh, We lost him. No, it'll come back. No, it's coming back. There's like a three second. That's all right. Oh, was it? We got the gist of it. Yeah. Shish kebab. So. Wow. I mean, I like a good shish kebab I do too. as much as the next guy. Usually not human based, though. Uh, I don't like to be the shish kebab. I've never had human bob. <laughs> what? What is putting what, the bob in shish kebab? What's the movie with Matt Damon where they get all the Matt Damon? They get shrunk. Is it called? Is this called shrinkage. shrinking? Shrinkage. shrinkage. I'm just imagining everybody gets like <laughs> Jesus comes and shrinks everybody, and then just <laughs> kebabs them. Because he can't Toast act- us nicely. He literally has to use a, shi- a shish kebab our size. Like he can't. Right. He, he can't use a heavenly one that's big enough for all of humanity. He can't just come and poke <laughs> the big skewer. Like take a flagpole and just put it right through everybody. <laughs> it's a shish kebab. He just needs to shrink it down. Get the Barbie set up. Maybe in Australia and just airplane everybody in. You know, into Australia because they'll let everybody in. And then just shrink them, kebab them, put them on the grill, and so the, uh, there you go. So the the picture that he uh, paints for us is that Jesus is actively murdering when he returns. When he returns, he's actively judgment mur- murdering, slaughtering, which feels uh, that feels like that's even more than just murdering. It's grossly murdering. Uh, those who have not repented or or have not correct asked uh, recognized and believed and asked for forgiveness yep so i got a verse to read if you guys want to get biblical please is this where it talks about <clears throat> jesus the great barbecue in the sky <laughs> <laughs> not in my version oh but this is First John four eighteen. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. You should get the Traeger translation. <laughs> <laughs> For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever Just fears has not been perfected in love. Now you can read that like, oh, you, you're afraid. You you haven't been perfected yet. You Be might very read afraid. into that you haven't been saved yet. But I think that passage is going a little bit bigger than that, and it does sound like perhaps this pastor still needs to be perfected in love. Well, he doesn't really sound afraid, but he's definitely spewing fear. Um, Is it like the question I have is, can you, this guy preach the gospel without using fear? Can you guys preach the, like, wait, did you say that this guy preached it without using fear? I don't imagine he would preach. It's going to be like, you're dead, you're dead in your sins. Like there's nothing you can do to please God. All things that like, there's versions of that. It's like, yeah, it's you're describing humans that make mistakes and will continue to make mistakes. But the good news is uh, God forgives. Okay. I remember many years ago, we went to a different church. We listened to some kids get up and give their lives to Christ, but they did it all almost robotically. Yeah, robotically. It was baptism Sunday. Same, ex- all high same exact words. Seven or eight kids. I, like I found out like, what was it like? They were going to miss the rapture. Miss, yeah, the rapture. I'm, I'm going to be taken away. I, this is so like it was, brimstone and fire was scary. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in that direction. It was, it, they were, it was like avoidance. Uh, yes, like I want, I want to make sure I don't go to the bad place. It wasn't like so. In my, my thinking is, which is, put the fear aside. 
even though there could be fear there, it's this person, this God came to earth and died for us. And this, like there is a great life to be lived, joy and happiness. And in the toughest of times, just he'll be there for me. For me, there's no fear there. Let me try to steel man it a Do little it. bit. I like that. <clears throat> so if if the conversion experience is driven by I'm scared, I don't want to go to hell, um, and it brings someone to genuine faith, and it and and they now from that point on live a a as good a life as we can try to describe in the Christian faith, is that wrong? Uh, no, I don't think so. If that were possible, my one question to you, Ste- O oh, Steel Manor, uh, the man, our man of steel. Yes. Quick draw, Andy McGraw. Um, can you wait? Re- rephrase that again. Sorry. So the the scenario that I'm setting up is the conversion experience happens because uh, okay, it, it's it's prompted by fear. But it propels you into a the, a positive life of Christian faith. Now I'm going to use a uh, d- comparison, like a good relationship between a man and his wife. Compare it to God. Obviously, it's gonna it's gonna be less than God. However, that looks between God and us. But compared to God and you his th- wife, do you think that that's a different podcast? <laughs> we'll break that down. <laughs> Because God is married. I mean, obviously. He married Earth, right? Mother Earth. Could you, if your wife was afraid of you, do you think genuine love could be a part of that at all? Like if I... Like if you wanted to scare her into loving you. Is there any universe where that would work? Any multiverse? I guess technically. If the multiverse is real... Jeff Rogers can back me up. Then I guess possibly there is a multiverse that or universe that exists where you could scare a woman into loving you. Jeff, multiverse? Yes, no. It could happen. Jeff says it could happen. Okay, but in our universe, okay, I think about arranged marriages. I was thinking about that too. Go yes. for it. No, take, you take talk it. about it. Well, no, arranged marriages. I mean, there's probably a lot of fear in, like, especially I think for. Both sides, probably more for the wife. Like, this is scary. This is, I'm, I have fear. It's genuine. And, and then they grow to, to love this person. In a free society where people get to choose who they love, it, it, like, I, I don't know. Is that, I think love can develop from in a cult, a bit, a culture that has that sort of arrangement where it's just a part of the fabric of culture. It wouldn't be like, your daughter turns 14 and then you drop it on her. Guess what? You're getting married to this person and you don't have anything to say. In cultures that have arranged marriages, my guess is it's in the fabric of the yeah. culture. It's unquestioned. And so I think the fear is is not the same. There might be nervousness, but there's more of a duty. This is my duty. This is what I do. Oh, because you've gone through it. Well, so I have, <laughs> I have, you, you're, you're, you're speaking for someone that you have no idea. And isn't that what you just did? Well, there's, I'm making the, I'm not making the assumption, but I'm saying that there probably is fear going into that. I mean, that's a scary thing. One to get married. I mean, even when that's, we get married, that's it, scary. it's scary. On that's, its own. That's an example on its own. That's, that's uh, separate, but it doesn't answer my question. Can you guys, is there a universe where, in either direction, you could be scared into a genuine love. Scared into it. Well, and that's maybe you could be scared into submission. Is that is does God want submission or does he want love? I guess it comes down to what's love. Baby don't There's hurt a me. song. Baby don't hurt No, me. I, I realize that, but the, the Don't I, say anymore. We don't want to get demonetized, even though okay. we're not making money. The, <laughs> I mean the question is you know, you're saying, you know, scared into love. Because in Andy's example, like, like, oh my gosh, I'm really scared. So I will turn to God. And I, I'm, I'm being a little bit flippant. So there's probably a version of, and I experienced it as a kid, yeah. where 
oh my gosh, I just secret send again. <laughs> and I, I'm worried I'm going to miss the rapture. I think we know what that means, right? We know what that means. Secret send. Yeah, I, oh, 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 oh. I'm assuming that's <laughs> Sports Illustrated. Or Macy's catalog <laughs> bra section. I don't know. What's a Macy's? <laughs> I'm going back to... <laughs> I'm old, man. 45. Catalogs were a thing, and they had bra sections. You and I both can't wear skinny jeans anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cutoff, by the way. In case you're a wonder listener. At 45? Uh, yeah, 45. Kathy Ireland might have been my secret sin. Her kids go to my friend's school that he runs. <laughs> And I've been trying to get an introduction for years, and it's not happening, and I'm not happy with that. So, Matt, if you've been listening and watching, doggone it, give me that intro to Kathy Ireland. Lindsay said it's fine that we can talk. Um, so we never. Maybe there's not a good answer, but I I do feel like love doesn't involve fear. Well, at least according to First John four eighteen, there is no fear in love. And so maybe fear gets you there, but somehow it needs to transition to love. I don't know. It, it's, um, I'm not sure. Fear, fear is a better way to get people. And to it con- is a motivator it's for a, sure. It's a motivator to control yes. a group and to keep people in the group and try well, to because get more it's people. A, it's an extreme emotion, right? And so sometimes like let's make an argument for it. Sometimes you need an extreme emotion to break you free from whatever thing it is that you're, you're stuck in. So I won't do anything until I'm encountering some sort of, uh, well, uh, critical moment. It could be a, an animal. Like you're a tribe way back in the day yeah. and you hear a noise, you don't know what it is, but your instincts kick in, fear kicks in. And so there's no thinking. There's just acting. Jared, you go take care of it. That's yeah, right. it's you. Go get it, Jared. We don't know what it is. Well, and there's many types of fear. One is like, hey, I'm gonna. There's gonna be violence. I'm gonna, you know, I, I'm gonna punch you right now. Fight or flight. And now I'm like, okay, I'll I'll do what you want. And then there's the fear of of I think the fear of God. Like I don't want to lose who I am. I don't lose my soul. Like I want a good heart. And if I don't have that, it's death. It's I, I don't want. I would. I fear yeah. that. And I don't want that. Uh, that reminds me of another verse. Um, it's in Proverbs. Uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Uh, yada, yada, yada. But in this context, um, fear is not like, I'm afraid of you. Why are you so angry? Uh, it's more like like the healthiest of respects for something that's like, I acknowledge the completeness of who you are, God. It's like a DJ Khaled thing, like respect. <laughs> exactly. Oh, exactly. A 100%. That's exactly how it is. You look up to God. Another one. Another one. Um, but I, like, I think of the beginning. What, what's the end of wisdom? Now, I'm connecting dots here that, you know, your mileage will vary. You might tell you what it is. Yeah, hopefully. But um, if the beginning is the fear of the Lord, what if the end is just resting in the complete the completeness of your acceptability of being an image bearer? There, there's no shame. Like when there's when you make a mistake, you acknowledge it, you move on, you make it right. But you, there's no sh- shame spirals. You're not spinning out of control. Like I think when you truly belong and you know you belong and that's when you're in your sweet spot just is that click. wisdom just though? clicks and that's the end of wisdom like knowing that this is this is a speculation on my part so wisdom i, I feel like we we constantly gain through life true but a lot of times people 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 associate the fear of god including some of the aspects of this preacher it's like that's literally the fear of the lord right saving you because you're you're you don't want to miss the rapture you're, you don't want to go to hell forever and i is it possible that maybe god is bigger than that and god can accomplish things in ways that don't result in 
the mass slaughter of millions of people? According to for all time. Socrates, according to Bill and Ted, that is Socrates Johnson. Correction, Socrates. Socrates. Uh, true knowledge is knowing that you know nothing, dude. I love that. <laughs> I agree. And, and you can't find true happiness until you realize you can never actually be happy. And that's how we got emo music. That's right. That's how, that's how we got it. I feel like I should go watch the South Park I'm episode now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. My Chemical Romance people, MCR folks, that's for you. Yeah. So. Mm. Oh, and. Oh, do you like the Brothers Bond? Were you reacting to that or did you just it have has a, a little bit of a single malt flavor to it a little bit. I like that. That's nice. I had a thought, but I lost it when Andy, when Andy was singing about fear, a, a wisdom. I think we just, we gain it through life. I, yes. The idea of fear and the gnashing of teeth, like we're going to come back. If you're not a believer, you're going to be slaughtered. And I was talking with a friend of ours that he, you know, I, I threw this out to him. Like, what would that be like? And he's, and what would what be like? He, what would it be like? Yeah, anybody who doesn't believe, yeah, you're you're in deep trouble. He used other words. Uh, he referenced seventeen verses, and uh, I tried to take notes, and then I was overwhelmed, and I was driving. So I'm like, okay, yeah, Isaiah, uh huh, okay, Revelations, yeah, two and three, uh, Matthew seven twenty one, okay, and but ultimately, definitely I, not the part where it talks about I, loving your enemies. I, I can't. I came back to the the question of is it just about having a good heart for the Lord? Because there are people who could be like, I believe, and they're still going down because like only God knows and you may be doing the works and you may make it look good. And you may say, I'm a believer, but really in your heart, you'll, you, you don't. And I think part of our, you know, part of church right now is we've got, congregations across the country that they're just they're there they're doing their part they're showing up they're leaving and mm. they're not doing anything for their families they're not you know giving people imparting wisdom they're checking a box yep and uh man listen to jeff just judging half the country angry jesus is coming they keep on checking a box. They should fear God more. People get ready. Angry Jesus is coming. <laughs> that's two songs tonight. There's two songs. <laughs> Listener, that's two songs. Viewer. Can we not come up with a better, like, is, well, actually, can the God? The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So the thing that came to mind for me was, you remember that line in Lion, in Lion Witch in the Wardrobe? And they're and the kids are finding out about Aslan, and they say, "Well, they learn that he's a lion." And they say, "Is he a tame lion?" And the Narnians are like, "No, gross." They're like, "Not, not at all." But he's good. And I mm. think there's in, I think C.S. Lewis is able to describe the fear part connected to the goodness. That is helpful, I think, for a lot of us to understand what is what is trying to be described as fear. Is is he a tame lion? He is not. He's powerful. But is he good? Yes, he's good. It's the good heart. Oh, that got emotional for me. I didn't expect that. It's worth it's worth contemplating. Um let's take a moment. One of the uh Okay. Or, because or, the or fear not. Because the fear is at at the core of it, it does represent that there is there is power that exists there, and so if we encounter extreme power, there, sh there should be some level of like trepidation, a little bit, naturally, for sure. But at the same time, when the like that balance of he's not a tame lion, but he's but he's good. Yeah, is is this lion the he's, one that he's for you? 
is yeah is this is this lion one that will lord that over you like okay, okay. Well, you need to know my power i think about marriage a wife i fear that she would divorce me like if i i mean just natural um natural consequences um but we don't know just one day just the fear of like uh, my my kid could leave me my wife could leave me my and i there's a, a healthy fear there that that could happen um i want to ask why well um you've never thought about this um i mean not that it would happen but that but i would never want that to happen it would suck right and so I fear that actually happening. Yeah. Don't think it's going to happen, but still there's a healthy fear there. And, and, but I don't act. I mean, a little bit of me inside me maybe acts like I want to make sure that I preserve, preserve this. I think that makes sense. I think I know what you're saying. <sighs> it does make sense. Thanks. However, well, <laughs> that's not why you fell in love with your wife. It's the reason he stays in love with her. No. <laughs> But I'm kidding. It's it's I I think it's a beautiful and honest and I genuinely thank you for for it's transparent I'm trying to create a parallel universe here. I don't like using the word authentic, the lion. but I think it was authentic. Cuz authentic almost doesn't mean anything anymore because everybody uses it. But if it meant something, yes, that's that's good. Overbearing fear and a healthy but fear. But that's not are two why you things. got into it. No. Like you, the the way you It's love why your I want to keep it's a little bit of why I want it's to keep it. It's a part it. of it, yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's a part of it. But, yep. um, I so this this guy he the, he references Revelation and Jesus coming back and the warfare Jesus, which is on display um, at with a plain reading of Revelation. I'm wondering though, Revelation is such a gnarly book and it's so anti-imperial, like it's directed directly at I should just say it's it's directed at Rome in their context it uses Babylon but it's it uses sort of coded language but the people at the time would have totally understand stand understood that John uh, of Patmos was referencing Rome and it's anti-imperial Rome it's just like a brilliant propaganda piece against Empire don't think I didn't catch that subtle flex of you saying of Patmos. Yeah, it wasn't so subtle. He was flexing. He was flexing. Uh, okay. His mind muscles. Okay. Now muscle. that I'm on the Christian side of it, love seat. Yeah. Yeah. You just see my. I I I see you in a whole new light. Yeah. <laughs> that John Mayer song was written about me. Anyway, so Jeff. So anti-imperial. <laughs> hey, atheist. Hold on. the The thing is like. It's so anti-imperial. And what? how do Roman emperors wage peace? Through conquest, through violence. And this picture of Jesus coming back just with the, the world's biggest shish kebab, um, slaughtering people, God has no better imagination on how to get his means done than Caesar does. Because that's what Caesar does. Caesar achieves peace, Pax Romana, Pax Americana. We spread our foreign policy to spread our empire. So in this scenario, it's done through the sword. Is Jesus I, bringing I, I, tribulation? Jesus is the Jesus is the four horsemen. I I don't know about that. Like there are four separate horsemen. But I mean, well, he's he's. Alluding to tribulation, end times, the, I, maybe I'm missing it. Maybe I've not spent enough time in Revelation. Who, Jeff, did you know was written by John of Patmos? Anyway. Not the same as the author of the Gospel of John. No, that's so many people that's get John that of, confused. That's John of Glendale. John of anyway, Glendale. Magical uh, kingdom of Glendale. 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 Anyway, the, uh, I don't recall Jesus uh, skewering anybody in Revelation, but maybe I have a poor memory. Jesus is riding into battle on a white horse. 
and against humans with a sword coming out of his mouth. This is the thing. This imagery, it's like so they recognize it's, it's all literal, Zach. Every part of every, Revelation is literal. He's already been kebabbed. Sword out of his mouth, and his robe is already bloody going into the battle. So clearly, this pastor doesn't know what he's talking about because he should have said he sorted them. It doesn't say a shish kebab is coming out of his mouth. True. I like this clarification. This is one of the reasons why people tune into Bros, Bibles, and Beer on YouTube and your favorite podcast app. <laughs> yeah, if Thanks, you're looking Andy. for that hot theological hot debate, take. yeah, we've but, got it for you. Obviously, there's a multitude of ways you can interpret these things, but the the sword coming out of the mouth is like he wields the sword of truth out of his mouth. It's his word, and uh, the robe his robe is already bloody going into the battle. It's his own blood from being slain on the cross. Like there's, these are some interpretations that I think are a little bit bigger and show a a better picture of who God is, in my opinion. But I'm serious about this. Like, if Jesus does come back, if this is the reality, as this guy is describing, where Jesus is going to come back and destroy anyone who's not saved, literally and physically, for all time, forever, he's he's no better than a Caesar. He's just a a, a Caesar dialed up to eleven, a tyrant who kills his enemies to achieve his means. Yeah, is it possible that God has a better imagination on how to? how to bring about the rec- restoration of all things. That's my question posed it's, in general to the, the universe and, and, it, and every multiverse. Good luck, everybody. It just, I just keep thinking of what is, what is your definition or your understanding of what God's wrath is? Is God's wrath an active uh, movement of God? Is he, is he enacting his wrath on you? Or is God's wrath allowing you to experience the consequences of your actions? It is God's removal of his favor and just saying, okay, you've you've made choices and I'm going to allow you to experience the consequences of those choices. And that's where, when that that description or that definition was uh, described to me a few years ago, that seemed to ring more true to me and not that always it's always a great idea to use your parenting experiences as theology but when i think about how to parent my kids yes there are time, there's been times where i've had to like enact pen- punishments but more often than not especially when they become teenagers i feel like my wife and i are making conscious choices to say this is a mistake these are these these are types of mistakes we're going to allow them to make. We can see it coming, and and they need they need to learn from that. They need to experience that mistake. People don't learn from from being told what's true. Well, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes they not sometimes the way to do it is that it, they have to go through it themselves. And so, I think mostly, especially as a kid, you you have to learn through experience. That's the best way you learn. Unless it's going to be like, well, <laughs> my kid, I, my teenage kid was drinking too much and I let him get in the car because they got to learn through experience. Like, no, you're going to yeah. put those guardrails up. But in a wise parent will find the spots to be like, no, nope, they just need to go through this. They need to experience the I, wrath. Of I the told parents. them, don't open the door and try to step out when we're on the freeway. I told them, but you know what? Sometimes you just got to experience learn it yourself. So I let him make that mistake. Welcome to my son, Stubby. We should save that wisdom for our Patreon episodes for the paying subscribers. You know, that's... Uh, I've heard about these this mythical beast. Okay. Where you get paid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> enough of this wrath. Okay. Do we have... We have questions. We... Don't we have... Que- we have questions. Can we get to those questions? Sure. I want like to... I want to get to these questions. I like it, Jeff. Zach's... I'm really glad you asked, Jeff. Zach, I know you've got questions. I want to hear them. Andy wants to hear them. The Christian side of this podcast wants to hear them. All the Christians over here would like to hear the questions. So imagine you have a criteria for who you're going to be friends with. I think Andy and I have chosen. Well, we'll we'll get through these questions first. (laughs) We'll see. The the couch might flip. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) 
Um, <laughs> Let's find out. You know, maybe it, maybe you're looking for a, a producer for your podcast. Oh. And like maybe you ask some questions. <laughs> maybe you. It's a good. These are good questions for the types of leaders we want to follow. Could be a past spiritual leader, pastor. Could be a political leader. Um, Who do you want in your life? But maybe we'll. Yeah. Maybe do you even want yourself in your life? Like, we'll we, see with these questions. We need a new term for litmus test. No one does litmus tests anymore. Question number one. When was the last time that you heard this person change their mind? Or just think about yourself. When was the last time you heard yourself change your mind? Should we just wait? Can we pause? Can we do sure. one at a time? Is that yeah. okay? Can we yeah. point, at, point at each other and stuff? When's the last time? When's the last time you do, have you changed your mind about something important? Shh. Yes, the way I interact with my wife, certainly the way I communicate. Uh, this is on the fly, and maybe you're about to do it. Learning specific, like learning lessons of like communication, Communi and honestly, across the board, doesn't even. I mean, family, wife, my children. Work, coworkers. Uh, it, there is definitely a, a script that's been uh, altered in my life in terms of communication, and I just have to be a. I know. I, I've known, just because someone's like you know, long time ago, twenty years ago, plus twenty years ago. Uh, yeah, that's that's really hurtful, or. I wish you hadn't said that. Or you need to apologize to my wife for saying that. I was like, or you're an asshole for saying that. And I, I'm, you know, so over the years, my wisdom has grown a little bit. And, uh, and my wife has taught me how to, or bestowed some wisdom on me of like, yeah, I don't really like, being told something in that way and or hey would you communicate to the kids instead of me or whatever it might be so taking a you know hey pushing you out there like can you take lead on this or in communication with the kids or can you know change this up and so ultimately communication has changed a lot so that is something that took effort it still does I'm not, I'm not great at communicating um, certain things in certain times because I like to do things on my own, and uh, it doesn't really work in the world of people. So, not often. That's good. Yeah, Andy, can you think of any examples? It's okay if you don't, or examples of people that you respect that that did it. Uh, th there are definitely times at work for sure where I will, I'm paid to have an opinion about things. And uh, so there's a big pressure to like always have the right opinion. There is instantly. Yeah. There's totally, there's, there's a pressure to have the right opinion and make sure that you've, um, you're making good decisions. Um, so I've found myself sometimes uh, <laughs> someone mentioned to me a few years ago, I, they asked me a question and I gave an answer that in my mind, I was like, I don't know, maybe 50, 50 on. And they said, Oh wow. Okay. Is that true? And then I went, Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe probably. <laughs> and they went, Oh, wait a minute. You, you said that so confidently though, <laughs> that I just, thought that you actually really knew that. <laughs> and I went, no, no, not at all. That's just, uh, I think maybe that's the thing. <laughs> you walked it back. Yeah, I did. Well, I did walk it back because I didn't realize that the way that I was coming across was you left very, it. If you left it alone, it would have been case closed, ironclad, rubber stamp. This is the way it is. This is the way it is. Yeah. But, but, uh, but what I've, tr what I'm trying to do is to say things like, Hey, this is my opinion. Um, feel free to disagree, or, um, but if I'm wrong, like someone say something else, 
and leaving leaving some room i think is what i'm trying to do is leave some room for someone else to have an alternate opinion and then if that if that opinion i think is better and if that idea is better than going yeah okay let's go with that thing that seems that seems like a better way to do this um so that happens to me at work um quite a bit i think uh i think for Lindsay and i in our in our marriage typically the way that what we a pattern that we started when we were er, first married was um and this was like advice that had been given to us hey in in your marriage you're going to encounter things that um that both of you may not see eye to eye on um, really and really i know it's weird and at the same time you're not going to have the same level of passion about the thing and so the 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 advice to us was hey is consider this the person go with the person who's most passionate about the the decision and so i think that there's been a lot of times in in my marriage with Lindsay where and she would say this too like it, it goes back and forth i would say i don't i'm not passionate about this thing you are okay we'll go with yours and then sometimes it you know that flips back and forth those are the times that i can think of um other than that like Kobe Bryant deciding that he didn't want to be traded after all in 2012 and the Lakers getting Pau Gasol and things working out for the best. Perfect. Those are the two that I can yeah, think of. That's good. That's good. May he rest in power. Oh, I like the way you said that. Also too soon. It Is will, it? It will always be too soon. Such a purple and gold Homer. I have a I have a picture of Kobe in my bathroom. I can Google I any means. number of pictures of Kobe. I own one that's hanging on oh, the wall. Okay, that's what I mean. I, I th- Tonight I'm going to go print a picture of Kobe out <laughs> and hang it on my bathroom. Probably taller on the wall than you do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know what that means. Did you want to speak to this, or were you going to question two? Uh, anybody? Or have you never changed go your ahead. mind? No, <laughs> I, I change my mind all the time. Just listen to the podcast. Okay. So I'll go to number two. Okay. Um, do they primarily identify out groups as a mode of bonding their in group together? Look at those guys. Come they're, on. They're doing it wrong. Come on. I do. Right. I, Are they doing it wrong? I did have a, a, as I looked at this question, the thing that came to mind, there was a recent um, guest speaker at our church and started the sermon out with, just creating a straw man, straw man of atheists, um, and just kind of like beating on that, and and then quoting the proverb: "The fool has said in their heart, there is no God." So, whatever you think about that, it's it's what he's setting up, and I, I'm just saying this as an observation, not a judgment. But, um, like a- atheists, they just want their own code; they want to reject God, and they're fools because the Bible says so basically. And so what that does is it he's speaking to a group, he's opening a sermon like this. And I don't even know if this is intentional. I think sometimes we naturally do this. It gets the average person, the audience and in, in the congregation is going to be a Christian. And so instantly it's like, Oh yeah, the fools believe that stuff. The fools believe those things in that way. And we're not fools. And so it does set up this in versus out thing. That's going to, allow the rest of his um, and it's also engagement sir, it is engagement the unspoken hashtag am i right kind of and i and Can i I'm get not, an amen i'm not using this like while i don't like that tactic i don't think it's fair i know plenty of atheists that would um elaborate on the way they believe or don't believe in a much more articulate way and reasonable way um but it's this setting up in versus out. It's just, a, it's what most speakers will, they'll do a version of it. It doesn't have to be in church context. It's just. It, it speaks to tribalism. Right? Yeah. And, and tribalism is rampant. I mean, it's existed since the beginning of time, but it feels, I don't know, maybe we're just. It's all over social media. You hear the far the right. groups of The radical whatever. left. 
And it's like, what it feels it, more intense than it has in the past. Like this does feel new. It feels dialed up to 11 in a way that maybe it was at 10 and a half before. Yeah. I mean, way more than like 1860s. Now, let me get real serious. If I don't have eight pack abs, then I'm on the outside. And I see this every day on my phone, eight pack abs. Well, there's good news. Or six pack. Um, most. <laughs> Andy, are you grumbling? Cause you're like, where am I? Uh, they disappeared. The Bud Light party ball. <laughs> there's good news. <laughs> good news. Did you say there's Bud Light for party you guys? ball? Uh, secret sin. Do you want to talk about something? <laughs> the truth wants to come out. <laughs> the truth does want to come out. We'll get to the truth eventually. Um, <laughs> Good news, gentlemen. The Ooh. average woman oh, likes okay. a little dad Prefers bod. a dad bod. A little bit of dad bod. Yeah. Maybe, they, maybe they want to you look at, like you give a damn, but not that much of a damn because, like, is he? I'm not sure he's not gay. My theory on that one is uh, they don't want to be judged to that degree. Oh, yeah. Turn it back on them. They don't want to be scrutinized. Ooh. Yeah. Well... Whatever it means. Okay. Feels Don't like, worry about those Instagram ads, Jeff. You just be the best possible Jeff that you can be, Jeff. I, but I agree. Tribalism, that's just a thing. It's a normal It's a normal thing. And I think, um, well, I'll... I'll I, uh, what is it called? I, I'm going to give my time back to the distinguished man in the angel hat. Okay. Noted. I don't know what I'm... I don't know what the so do you do you ever are. Do you fall into tribalism? Do you fall into that that trap yourself? Where We're winners. They're losers. No, that um, that's just a, I'm, a coaching I'm, reference. When I play rich man, poor man, card game. The card. It's a card game, listener. It's a card game. Uh, I feel like the tribalism is significant because if you don't make it into that top tier, and you don't know how to play your cards right. Then you then, should question your value as a human. You figuratively and literally don't know how to play your cards and, right yeah and if you don't then we will question it for you yeah i i just think that's right the the tribalism thing is i'm everyone's prone to it it's a natural instinct and sometimes it's it's important like there's a time for in group out group things but by and large what's going on right now in culture is is like you just hear like the far left from one side you hear the radical right and well, the woke thing is huge. Those groups are comprised of individual people with individual needs that aren't... There are agendas out there, but by and large, it's like, no, just go smile at the person that's serving you food. Make eye contact with the grocer that probably has way different views than you. The world is way better than it is not. Um, but the tribalism is trying to like steal that from us. So I bet you don't make eye contact with the grocer, do you? Sometimes I do... In a weird way. Too long. Question yeah. number three. Have you heard about a Macy's catalog? Wait, oh, this is part of question number three? <laughs> <laughs> do tell. What's a Macy's? Uh, how often do they admit mistakes genuinely and not performatively? Doing it publicly is a bonus. When's the last time you admitted a mistake? Often. When's the last time? Well, oh, I, I apologize to my today. wife after the referenced fight. Uh, well, to, as far as my wife goes, that was just a couple nights ago. The same night that we went, we had the talk and then I went home and she's like, I don't really like how you communicated. I'm like, okay, this is weird. Cause I just talked about how I just like talked with mm. the guys about how I'm just, I'm trying so hard to communicate better. And she's like, I don't really well i'm not even gonna say what she said but ultimately i'm like i own that you know what i, I did poorly there because i'm kind of keeping a grade for myself like you know for everybody that i'm you know need to be communicating with so that's uh ah, and i'm like yeah. I, i'm i'm sorry so that was just a couple nights ago that's good um, I forgot to tell my wife that I'm playing a show on Friday with you. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh, this Friday? So I should cancel the plans? That oh, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, uh, that one's on me. Sorry, babe. But you want to come see me sing some Tom Petty songs? Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. Yeah. 
I used to know a guy, by the way. Well, I still know him. He was a champion at doing this thing. And it was kind of like this weird misdirection capability that he had. And his version of this would be like, dude, what, what the heck, what happened here? And he's like, Oh, I know that, that totally sucked. Didn't it? And you're like, yeah, it did. He goes, I know super lame, right? Like he wasn't the one that, <laughs> that <laughs> he did was, it. Like he did it. Yeah. And he's like with you talking about himself. <laughs> Like I mean, third third person. Yeah, like third person. Like I know, super dude with the worst. What that's the heck? Awful, Look over here. Yeah, that's an awful neutralizer. It was, and then you'd be like, I guess I'm not mad anymore. Oh, dude, you just got gaslit. I did, but he somehow was a genius in being able to like transfer the the uh, responsibility somehow. That was horrible. <laughs> I think yeah. I was a part of it. That was so terrible. It was. I know. I know. It was the worst. Wait, are you? Are you sad about this? Do you regret any of this? Yeah, I know. I totally regret it. Why wouldn't I? It's, the, it's terrible. I'm so happy how terrible it was. <sighs> yeah, that guy was an expert. His name was Joe Biden. Talk Andy, would you like to split some of this Pliny the Elder with me? Yes, I do. So the final one, I think we, we probably got to land this plane soon. The okay. final question we are guilty of tonight. And then, yeah. I, and then I want to talk about leadership. Based off these four questions, and it's very brief. Oh, okay. Okay, well... You need to like propose it and then get a second and then we vote on it. <laughs> That's uh, how this podcast works. Do they want to hear alternative points of view for reasons other than mocking them? So <laughs> we kind of we did that a little bit, but mock it. We did we mock I think people this healthy, episode? Is it a consistent habit of like you're not bringing up other points of view? Oh, I learned this thing. I don't think I believe this, but it was interesting and it made me think. Like that's. That doesn't happen that often. That's a healthy version of bringing up other points of views. But this is like, we brought up this guy. I wouldn't say we mocked him. No, we didn't mock him. We deconstructed it a little bit. Yeah. Um, criti critiquing and mocking critiquing, are different things. You're, you're probably right. So I am right. We're on the spectrum, but I think we're on the healthy side of the spectrum. We did mock the other church. We that did? we went to. No, oh, we didn't mock them today. Not you. No, we just said what they I know, believed. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. We didn't mock that. We just said what happened. They might be right. Maybe the rapture is happening and they're they're all they all got baptized just in time. Okay. We just I didn't say it was stupid. Out of fear of the Lord, was... I'm gonna go with you and I just don't want to get raptured. You do want to get raptured. I mean, that's I the way that one get... works. You should get raptured. What if the rapture happened and it was me that was gone? Sorry, my, my drink's gone. Me and Jeff would be gone and it'd just be you and Andy sadly looking at this screen. What if the rapture is the reverse of what people actually think it is? They're just getting rid of the people because it's the renewal of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> so rapture means you got taken out of the renewal of of, of all things. The, re and the rapture, restoration. Rapture, renewal, restoration, all our words. I think you're on to something. Rapture. You, you're getting launched into the sun so that it leaves the renewal of all things for us. <laughs> But the it does it does protect you from the eventual heat death of the universe. So you you prematurely experience heat death before the heat death. I don't know what that the means. The raptured ones do. Yes. The yeah. liberals will probably be like, well, this is probably going to help. There you go, the liberals. This will probably, yeah, probably help. A little probably help climate, those climate guys. change. Well, if you're one of those people who likes one of those people, <laughs> send That's all of those Christians Kyle to the Dunnigan, sun. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle Dunnigan doing Andy, Bill Maher. Andy doing Kyle Dunnigan doing, doing Bill, Bill Maher. Okay. Who are these people? Okay. Would okay. you be one of those people who likes one of those people? Of all of those questions, well, just taking those four questions, those that do all of those well, like they do listen to, they they are flexible. They can change and a, a direction. Um, they listen to other people. Those are the great leaders. Yeah, they have all of those qualities. They're not hell bent on doing it just their way, because those that do, we don't hear from them again. They're they fall by the wayside. Unfortunately, As that's not true. But I agree with you that what a good leader is. You think, I mean, that, how often does Donald Trump like say, I, mean, I was wrong about something? Let me learn from you. I mean, you're wrong, Jeff. <laughs> this, I feel like this is back to the question. It's like, that went really 
bad, didn't it? No, I wish it was true that that the people that don't listen, don't learn, okay. and don't adapt, aren't humble. I wish those people fell to the wayside and that the real leaders could stand up. But everybody that's re- trying to lead right now in this country, I don't think we could describe them with those. And maybe it's important to vote for one or the other. Or whoever okay, it is, in terms but- of like government officials, that's different than... Because you have to have a super ego to get to those positions. No, you have to just cut right through everything and, and do it your way. Yeah. Because if you listen to everybody along the way, there's 300 million people to listen to. It's like, I'm going in this right. direction. That's All, a different story. It's okay. like, also, you're just encouraging me not to vote. So thank you. The, I think that the underlying theme across vote. all of those things is that if you're, if you're seeing someone who's bringing humility and vulnerability, like leaders, leaders that do that instantly in they, they win my respect. Yeah. Oh, Hey, you're willing to say, I think this is the thing, but it might not be, but we're going to go after it or, Hey, I thought this and, and I I learned something about this Mm -hmm. and I changed my mind and I'm, I'm willing to change my mind. We don't get to hear that ever. You, you, I challenge you to tell me the last time you heard a, a um, politician say, I've changed my mind about these things. I, I see it in a different light. Right, because that's political suicide. And it's considered weakness, which is a weird... Yes. Like, it, that, that's the thing that's... It's the opposite of that. It we've should, trained... Yeah, we've trained It people. should be the opposite of that. Right. It should be seen as strength. You are willing to step up and say... I'm I'm a type of person I'm not I'm not wishy washy, right? But I can be convinced with good arguments and good evidence. Of, of I can be I can disconfirm my beliefs if I need to. Yep, yep. And After, I, yeah. I love that. I love that. Every, you see how confidently I said that? Yeah. Do you yeah. even believe it though? I probably not. Okay. See, right. and that's what I did to that other guy. <laughs> All right. Well, now I think next next week you're gonna sit on this side. That's exactly. Yeah. I I've think earned, I just earned my spot uh, over there. It's musical. It's it's musical chairs, guys. But Jeff, I I don't disagree with you. Like when you're describing what a a good leader is, and Do I you agree with him. I think yes, but I wanted to frame it in a double, double negative. negative. Yeah. It's twice as because powerful. he also wants to say I don't like Donald Trump. Well, I don't hate Donald Trump and, you know, I might vote for Donald Trump. I mean, if he, you know, if he earns it, you know, we'll see. Probably not, though. I don't have vitriol. What do, what do you think? I I was just, I brought up Trump and I What's, automatically lose it. I lose. It's you went like, straight there. I did. I only brought it up because you can't. Should we just bail on this? Yeah, we right probably now? should. That's probably a better move. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Vote for Trump or don't. I don't care. <laughs> There's a. I like that bumper sticker. Vote for Trump or don't. Whatever. <laughs> I used to have a. Uh, I used to have a T-shirt that said "Apathy Coalition." Join us or not. Whatever. <laughs> That's good. And I love those. I love that deprecation. Cool Prius. Nobody like that bumper sticker on a Prius. Instant respect. And they usually drive better than the average Prius driver. You want to punch him in the balls right now, don't you? No, Jeff's that guy. Jeff knows it's not cool, but Jeff doesn't drive like... I like Jeff's. Yeah. I like Jeff's Prius. I don't hate Priuses. Pri-I. Pri. It's pronounced Pri. Uh, All right, let's get out of here. A flock of Prius. Priuses (laughs) is... Do you guys have anything that's... It's a murder of Prius. (laughs) Oh, I'm literally only watching soccer these days. Okay. All right. It's... All European football, you mean? Uh, English Premier League, Man City, Man United, Liverpool, Arsenal. I'm just like, I'm neck deep in it. I'm Man City it. sounds gay, right? Oh, wait. Can I tell you about something that I heard today that was way. said to me? In the uh, best way. A very smart. One of my best students uh, in, in sixth grade comes up to me and she goes, oh, she had actually left and came back. Mr. Pearson, um, I just... Do you want to hear something funny or just, I, I, it's just kind of a secret. When I, the quick bef- answer is no. I, before I know, as a teacher, before as I, a teacher in a public school, no, I do not want I, to hear this. No secrets. Bef- nope. 
before. Would I you like to hear a private secret? <laughs> no, I do not want to hear a private <laughs> secret. <laughs> I don't want to hear a private secret. Let the record reflect, reflect that I was not involved in this. Everybody, thank you for joining us. It's been a great time. Oh, Jeff, finish and it. Next, no, I don't. I want tell this to be. Kids, tell us your kid's private secret now. She's like, before I knew you, all I thought, Mr. Pearson's probably a fairy. Go on. That was it. And she walked away. Whoa. And I'm like, I don't know if she meant. What do you mean by, by fairy? You're like raising your hand, waiting to be called on in school. <laughs> What did you mean by that? She just walked it straight face. Just, I'm like, okay. A fairy. There's so many different directions. Nope. There's one direction. There's one direction. Sprinkle dust on you. Nope. Twinkle toes. You do yeah. follow Man City, don't you? Yeah. Um, both Manchesters. Manchester. Manchester. <laughs> or... You would Not call there's anything wrong man. with it. Dude, yourself. recently, Liverpool, Manchester City, it was the most epic game. And w that's what I've been consuming. Okay. What have you guys been consuming? Fairy dust? I don't have anything of mind right now. So that's great. I'm going to divert. I've been consuming our podcast. I bought yeah. uh, I bought the audio book, the audible book that you, disc that you recommended on Jonah because our church is going through Jonah. And so I wanted to be able to critique whatever was being said on stage. I consumed this one. That's I still I don't know how someone lives inside a whale for three. Turns out they days. don't because it's not literal, Jeff. It is. Nope. Or maybe it is. Doesn't matter, actually. That's the that's the real answer. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's literal exactly. or not. Exactly. It's my vote for Trump. Or Jesus don't. Born, born of a virgin. How did that happen? It's literal or it's not. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, Jesus. The, yeah, Jesus but the book is called Jonah for Normal People. Jonah for Normal People, Jared Bias. B-Y-A-S. And and it's been fun. I've gone through it um almost twice. And so I listen when I'm in the car. It's only like two and a half hours, maybe two almost three hours. or something like that. Yeah, it's two and a half hours. It's good. It's um, a couple of revelations for me in that um, have been to to think differently about this as um, more more figurative language language than literal, and then the second part has been the idea that Jonah dies in the story, and it's not just the idea. the The author of this takes takes the um, this the monologue in uh, chapter two and he starts unpacking it and he's basically describing he's he's showing that you that that jonah is describing that he sunk to the bottom of the ocean in 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 the story i don't know anyone who has sunk to the bottom of the ocean and lived and then it has some other language around it that describes him going uh to sheol effectively mm -hmm. which is the Hebrew closest Hebrew des description of hell that there is, the grave. It's the where grave. everybody went when yeah. they died. They all they all go to Sheol, and in th in that he's locked out of creation. And so, um, the uh, the whale or the big fish is is uh, described by the author as more of a um, an instrument of God's um, redemption than it is of. Uh, retribution and so it's been really fun to read through that or like you know listen through that i guess and and the reason i like i've gone through it twice is because like my brain kind of starts to wander which i think is the problem with audiobooks sometimes like my brain starts to wander and if i'm reading the book then i can just stop yeah but if my brain wanders the bottom book keeps going <laughs> <You're> right <laughs> I, um and so then i'm like oh shoot like back gotta it up go back bit. yeah i gotta back it up a little bit um but i appreciate it and and it definitely has caused me to take a different critical eye to anyone who's speaking at our church on a Sunday morning about this, about the book of Jonah, about, about these chapters. And, um, and what personally the jury is out is I, I do feel a little ambivalent right now. There's some of it that makes me frustrated with um, some interpretations that our church has taken. And some of it that I'm like, oh no, I think I think I can agree with that, or whatever. But but what I will, what I have walked away from ultimately with um, listening to this book about about the interpretation of Jonah is 
there's a lot of stuff that's ambiguous in there. There's a ton and it's not clear. And so it increases my skepticism for anyone who comes in with a hard, clear definition. And it's like, guess what, dude? Thousands of years and scholars disagree and they're like, it's not, it's not super obvious of what this, this thing means or what it's supposed to represent. And I, that makes me feel better reading that because it is, it's a weird book. Like it's just a super weird book. Mm -hmm. And at the same time makes me frustrated when I hear someone bringing like an absolute point of view. It definitely means this. It clearly is referring to these sorts of things when it's like, Bring humility in there. There's lots of people who's, who've pointed out, skilled scholars who pointed out, nope, it could mean that, but it could mean this too. And there's no, there's no obvious answer to that. So stop trying to make it be an either or literal or figure, figurative. What is, what is the meta narrative that God mm-hmm. is trying to communicate through this? What is he ultimately trying to say to us? Yeah, the, the literal truth is often not as like robust or explosive as like the metaphorical or figurative truth. Like what is the overarching or big picture? Or it's distracting. Right. Yeah. It becomes the new battle is like, oh, we, we have to prove yeah. that, oh, it's possible for the, this type of fish could have swallowed a person and they could have lived on their entrails, whatever, whatever it is. That's not the point. Yeah. That's not the point. You get distracted and then, yeah. So maybe it happened, maybe it didn't literally, but I think there's some deeper truths that are eternal in, in uh yeah like profound in a way that just don't get distracted by that i like that thank you i'm still reading hebrews brothers you will be forever you should yeah exactly yeah i'm still doing it i'm going slow (laughs) i knocked that out in two days on the uh bible solved it you you whatever it is you version you version intentionally going to like as slow as possible like read the verse read the the, oh, the steady version down right. below. And I, like I said last week, I think I don't use, I've never really done it in that method. I've, which maybe there's a reading version of the Bible that is the same as the audiobook version of listening to something where you just kind of like start to glaze over. Like, oh, I just, oh yeah, I just read three, three chapters. I don't know what I read. Okay. Be David, David begat <laughs> Jehoshaphat, who begat Jerobo, Jeroboam, who for who begat. It'd be fascinating to uh, read the read the Bible into Chat GPT and ask for would you summarize or it does that and does it give wacky answers? No. Oh, really? No. Didn't we do a? Didn't we test this once with like a a sermon? Try to like say, hey, give yeah. me a, give me a sermon on. Yeah. wrote a reasonable we sermon did. for us, yeah. but like Jonah, would it just? You should. We should ask it what Jonah means. We'll, I'll do that next week. There I'll bring go. that. There I'll bring go. that to the table. It's a good call. Yeah. So let's get out of here. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you, Jeff. Again, producer Jeff. Producer Jeff on the ones and zeros. Check out his YouTube channel, Fascinating World. You got some. You have some legit editing and video videography skills, like. It's you have some very phenomenal. Interesting yeah, it's worth checking out. Yeah, yeah, your talent's wasted here. <laughs> Jeff Rogers, Jeff, okay, fascinating we'll world. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, we will. For and sure. then we'll put it in the YouTube description too. Yeah. When I say we, I mean <laughs> yeah. Zach. Well, <clears throat> this agnostic. You said that so confidently, Andy. I guess. Zach will do it. Yes. Oh, we'll do that for sure. It'll happen. <laughs> um, right. All right. So bros, Bibles, beer on all the socials, YouTube, uh, bros, Bibles and beer or bros, Bibles, beer. You Any, are falling asleep right now. Anywhere the podcast <laughs> You're actually is falling found, asleep. Do the bros, Bibles, beer. Less people are following us because of what, <laughs> the way you said it. Hopefully. <laughs> I got my can. <laughs> Hey, from Death Row Records, Hard Happy Dad, you guys. Okay, they don't deserve a plug. No. We're talk no. About hey, it. Grace. Peace. Okay, cheers. I wasn't done with plugs, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. At Bros Bibles Beer, all the things. Yeah, all the things. All right, we're out of here. Are we? <laughs> Are we? I don't know.